Today I wanted to speak to you about healing the wounded feminine. And when I say wounded, I'm here using air quotes because I use that word loosely because it really is a paradox because you are not wounded. Your feminine essence is the fullness of who you truly are. It is your core essence. Your feminine energy is the essence of who you are. You are already whole and complete in and of yourself. But there's a distortion of feminine energy that you can buy into and believe for as long as your soul deems necessary And so healing the quote-unquote wounded feminine energy is really remembering and coming into realization of your wholeness, your holiness. Ultimately, the only healing that needs to occur is you remembering your own sacredness which has never been wounded can never be wounded and is not wounded that being said on this journey we often experience a lot of turbulence and there can be psychological wounding that occurs and this is likely the case for most that are called to this type of content and I want to dive deeper into this because ultimately the wounded feminine energy stems from a perception, a perception that there is an inner void that is lacking or needs to be fulfilled within you, which then perpetuates seeking outside of yourself for external validation, safety, security, approval, right? Outside of yourself in order to fill this perceived inner void. And ultimately on this journey, at some point, this void, this inner void, perceived void, is triggered. A void that leaves you feeling unlovable, unworthy, lonely, rejected, not good enough, abandoned. This abandonment wound is triggered. And what, now what happens for most unconsciously in order to fulfill this perceived void, they go on a journey looking to fill it through external factors such as career success, money, fame, a relationship, um, certain appearance, trying to gain acceptance, admiration, validation, love outside of yourself. Avoiding looking at the inner fear of abandonment and unworthiness, feeling broken, feeling not good enough, feeling lonely, All of those fears, feeling rejected, right? So this would be what we call the shadow. The shadow are the parts that we would prefer not to look at, that we don't want to shine the light on. We don't want to look at that. So what we do is we develop coping mechanisms in order to continuously fill that void in order to feel better. And avoid looking at the shadow. And this is the ego's attempt at trying to 
create that sense of love externally. The ego is very externally focused. And so the ego will go out and try to create this sense of fulfillment and love and acceptance and worthiness and feeling good enough and wholeness and stuff through external forms. And this can be anything. This could be through um, having to buy certain clothing in order to look a certain way, to present a certain image in order to feel admired. It could be having to go to the gym all the time in order to make sure your body looks a certain way, in order to feel good enough about yourself, in order for people to look up to you or look at you with a with eyes of desire, right? So this could also... I mean, this can manifest in so many ways. Oftentimes, relationships are a great way that this manifests because we're consistently chasing or seeking that love that we don't feel from within in someone else in order to fill that void, giving them an impossible task because no one can fill it for you, right? And so we go on this journey of pretending we're not good enough not remembering our own holiness, our own sacredness, not remembering who we truly are at our core, at our essence. So we go out and we have all of these experiences and circumstances and trials and tribulations, seeking, 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 chasing, chasing, chasing outside of ourselves in order to fulfill this perceived void while remaining to not look at the shadow, the underlying fears, right, of not being good enough, unlovable, broken, unworthy, fill in the blank with what resonates with you. And so this inner quote-unquote darkness, the shadow, is avoided. And the coping mechanisms are developed in order to keep our focus off of our inner essence and off of actually looking at what it is that we fear most and instead keeps our focus externalized on other people, places, and things that we think we can, we need in order to fulfill that void. And then Some people will spend their whole life in this hamster wheel chasing and seeking and chasing and and seeking outside of themselves in order to fulfill what they feel is lacking within. And you can see so many examples of this in society, even when you look at, you know, let's say someone that you feel has acquired everything that one could want in the material world, whether that be riches and f- or fame or beautiful clothing or beautiful houses or beautiful cars or all the friends and all the admiration, right? Yet they still feel internally, spiritually bankrupt even though they have all of the external riches. Internally, they're spiritually bankrupt at, in their in their heart space because they have been using that externalized world as a crutch and their coping mes- coping mechanisms which can be anything from like I was stating earlier very perceived healthy endeavors like always having to look a certain way and look perfect and be at the gym all the time or it could be uh drugs or alcohol or uh any kind eating disorders or um, consuming foods that make you feel better comfort eating in order to soothe yourself right so where are you self-soothing it could be retail therapy it could be so many different ways of self-soothing which is used as a coping mechanism by the ego to keep you externally focused outside of yourself in order to fill the perceived void within and here's the thing the void doesn't exist so healing the wounded feminine energy 
is really about coming home to your true essence and realizing you were never wounded to begin with. Now, many of you, if you're resonating with this content and you're resonating with being on the Divine Feminine journey, you've had a very turbulent journey that has triggered this abandonment wound over and over again on a very deep soul level. And what I wanted to say here briefly about this is that, yes, there is experience within your life 3D physical experience that has triggered this abandonment wound. But this goes even deeper. This is your soul's deep longing to merge with the oneness that it is. So this is a deep soul longing that all humans have this belief in separation this is separation consciousness leaves at its core a longing for oneness which is ultimately what this divine feminine journey is about it's about coming home to the oneness that you are and allowing your soul to merge into the oneness that it is The ego tries to fill this deep longing for oneness with externalized validation, right? Wanting the love and the acceptance and the acknowledgement and the praise and the admiration and the power and the success and the money and and all the things, right? All the material things as well. So the ego is trying to fill this inner void and pain without actually facing its deepest, darkest fears, without facing the shadow. And so part of this quote-unquote healing process is being able to go through the fear and the darkness in order to come into the light. This is about coming into union with your true essence, with yourself. And as your heart opens to the oneness that you are, to unity consciousness, right? To the oneness that you are, to the love that you are, that is connected in all things. There is a period of going through the shadow facing the darkness, facing the fears and the emotions that you would rather keep hidden, that you'd rather keep in the dark. And ultimately, it's about shining the light of consciousness on these shadows that diffuse its power. I often say shadow work is is sort of like a haunted house at night, right? If you go into a haunted house at night and it's dark, it's scary, right? It's very scary. But in the daylight, when you shine the light on the haunted house and you can see everything for what it is, you flip on that light switch and you can see the haunted house and all of the the little contraptions and the working and everything that seems so scary in the dark is no longer scary. And this is how you really integrate the shadow by shining the light of awareness on it, by shining the light of your consciousness on it. And through the power of shining your consciousness on it, you transmute it and it no longer has power over you. And so this deep abandonment wound that you may be experiencing, maybe even as you're listening to this, I'm getting full body chills as I say this, so I hope this is resonating with some, I know it is, is a gift, is a blessing. And I know, depending on where you're at on this journey, you're not going to want to hear this. 
and you might just be completely ready to turn this recording off. How could this possibly be for my benefit? What happened to me? What this person did? The story, the ego tells the story and loves the story and loves to cling to what happened and loves to cling to, you know, the victim and loves to cling to blame and loves to cling to justification and loves to cling to, you know, the fear and and perpetuate that story. But when you can look at the beauty behind the triggering, there's a reason that this is happening and there's a reason that it's been cyclical for most of you depending on where you're at when you're listening to this. It's not an accident. There are no accidents. There's no accidents that this has been a repetitive cycle in your story. It's here to show you. It's here to highlight your shadow for you. It's here to highlight what you've been running from. The deeper fears, the loneliness, the not feeling good enough, the feeling unworthy, the feeling of lack, the feeling of insecurity, the feeling of not being safe, the feeling of not being loved. This is all a lie. And you've created the situation. You're writing the script. You're writing the story. And all the players in your story, all the actors, you know, all the characters are showing up perfectly as planned, as scripted to highlight back to you exactly what you need to see within yourself. And for many of you, this abandonment wound has been triggered by a divine counterpart in your life and who else better to trigger your soul's awakening and to trigger you to look at the darkness that is keeping you from the love that is you the love that is your true essence than your own soul's reflection so now if you're listening to this you've come to a crossroad in your journey where you on a soul level, have decided that the external trappings of the world are no longer going to keep you stuck in toxic cycles and toxic loops, consistently trying to seek the love and achievement and admiration and recognition outside of yourself in order to fill this inner void. And instead, you're going inward You're turning your consciousness inward and you are willing to look at and even embrace and become intimately close with your shadow. You're no longer willing to give your power away to people, circumstances or situations outside of yourself due to having a low self-worth. The world is a mirror and a reflection of your inner consciousness. Everything reflects back to you. What you feel about yourself or how you feel about others and ultimately how you feel about others or how you judge others is also how you judge yourself. There is no separation between you and other. So relationships, and that could be a relationship with a family member or a friend or a romantic partner or the person that you see at the grocery store or at the gym. These are all relationships and you can recognize where you are judging yourself or judging others as a form of trying to cling on to your sense of separation because the language of the ego is judgment. 
And if you're in a state of judgment of yourself or others, then you are allowing the ego to drive the train in your story. Because as you come into heart-centered consciousness, which is the journey that you're on, you begin to realize that there is no separation between you and other. And as you begin to love yourself more, and you no longer judge yourself, and you see yourself as lovable and worthy, you will also see as your reflection others that are lovable and worthy. So you will cease to criticize and you will cease to judge. And that will all be replaced with compassion and understanding and love because you realize that you are one with all that is. And this is the heart-centered consciousness that is blossoming right now in your being, right? This is something that you are beginning to remember and come home to. And it can often be a little rocky road to get to this point because, again, it's the triggering that leads us down this path to begin with. And so I wanted to state state this again that the triggers, the abandonment wound that's triggered, the fear of loss or rejection or not being good enough or not being worthy, these are blessings that are pointing you, if you're willing to accept pointing you inward to explore what you've been running from and what keeps you seeking, perpetually seeking outside of yourself. So you may have heard the famous quote by Joseph Campbell The cave you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. So the cave you fear to enter is the shadow. And when you're able to explore the shadow with conscious awareness, with the light of your awareness, and fully allow yourself to feel the fears and the emotions that you've likely been repressing or suppressing or running from oftentimes your entire life consciously or unconsciously we've all been doing it because one thing all humans have in common is that at some point the ego starts to take form in our development and we believe ourselves to be separate people running around having separate lives and we see the world as something outside of ourselves that we have to then protect ourselves against or defend against. And we see the people in the world the same way. But there is a global shift happening. There is a a new earth awakening happening. There is a conscious shift happening, whatever you want to call it, where people, apparently separate people, that aren't really separate when you really boil this down, are waking up to the wholeness and completeness and the oneness that we are and that we are connected to all things. But the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. The cave again representing the shadow, what you would like to keep hidden, what you would like to keep in the dark. And when you're able to embrace that, And when you're able to allow that to be what is and you're able to embrace your emotions and really feel into and become intimately close with your fears and your emotions, are you able to diffuse the power that they have over you and set yourself free? Embracing the shadow is not something that the ego wants to do. The ego is very stubborn, very stubborn. And the ego will come up with many, many ways 
to keep you from going inward, to keep you from looking at your shadow, to keep you using your coping mechanisms that keep you from going inward, that keep you self-validating or self-soothing in order to keep you from really going a layer deeper into the cave, so to speak. And so the very first step on this journey when you've come to this point is being willing to surrender to what is. Being able to surrender completely to what is. Your life circumstance, your situation, wherever you find yourself right now. Without the trying to fix it or change it, or overcome it, or move away from it, or move past it, or move through it. And any coping mechanism that comes up that distracts you from this is an ego tendency to keep you externally focused on a false sense of validation that can feed your ego temporarily in the moment and give you a shot of it's like a drug in your arm, right? It's like it's like a being injected with a drug, giving you that shot of that drug to temporarily give you a high, to temporarily, you know, give you that shot of dopamine, whether, you know, give you that shot of praise, give you that shot of validation, give you that shot of approval, give you that shot of love, give you that shot of fill in the blank, right? And then you get that shot and it gives you a temporary high and then it quickly fades and your cycles repeat. But if you're listening to this, you're no longer willing to settle for toxic cycles repeating and you're willing to break the pattern, which means you also need to be willing to do something differently that you haven't been doing before. And the thing that's going to open this up beautifully for you in order to really really shift and alchemize this energy and alchemize the patterns is first to simply surrender to what is you're not going to hear within this program or within any of these audio recordings Let me give you a laundry list of to-do things, like tangible 3D strategies. You've likely been doing that for several years of your life already, if not decades, if not an entire lifetime. There's nothing wrong with rituals. There's nothing wrong with meditation. There's nothing wrong with, with, you know, full moon ceremonies or crystals or any of these other things but hanging a crystal around your neck is not going to give you this transformation you know and this is coming from somebody that loves crystals so I'm just throwing that out there (laughs) I'm just saying what you've been taught thus far is still likely even if it's quote unquote just spiritual quote-unquote disguised as spiritual these practices are oftentimes still a sneaky way to keep you externally focused outside of yourself and I still see that growing so much within the um, metaphysical community where people are putting so much weight and power outside of themselves in the form of external objects like for example crystals or pendulums or this or that you know I see it so much and I just want to say that if that's where you're at and that's fine like I I still full disclaimer I love crystals I have them all over the house I think they're beautiful I think it's a way I can incorporate nature into my living environment so I I I gravitate towards that. I gravitate towards flowers and plants and crystals and animals and all of that in my environment. But I'm not looking for that to save me. And I'm not giving it the power to heal me. 
and that's the difference. So this isn't going to happen by going to some healer down the street that's going to give you some amazing Reiki massage. Can they open up your energy? Yes. Can they help you become more, you know, uh, conducive to change? Yes. Even listening to this recording is doing that. But I can't do this for you. I can provide this recording, but you are the only one that's going to save you. And the truth is you don't even need to be saved, but that's another recording, right? That's another, that'll be another, another um, video. Because at this stage, there is a need to be with what is and surrender to it and realize that you are the one that is going to save yourself even if at the end of this crazy ass journey you realize there was no one to ever save to begin with because you're already whole and you're already complete and if you're there then that's perfect but if you're still avoiding if you're still rejecting If you're still resisting life in any way and you're still running in any way, which means you're chasing something else outside of yourself in any way, then there is a surrendering to what is that's going to open up this portal of healing for you. And when I say healing, again, the only healing we truly need is to remember our sacredness and our holiness, right? The part of you that has actually, that is not wounded and has never been wounded. But the ego has us running in a hamster wheel, right? If you're resonating with this, the ego has you running through this endless hamster wheel and the coping mechanisms are again giving you that shot in the arm that gives you that temporary high, whatever that shot is for you. Whatever that shot is for you, it's different for everyone. Oftentimes up to this point, it's been something outside of yourself like a relationship or some kind of facade that you're, you know, building up as a, as a face or a front that gets that external validation or approval or admiration or love outside of yourself. So... That is a perpetuating cycle that the ego has you on and now it's time to break that loop and break that cycle. So with that said, are you willing now to face everything consciously? Are you willing to go into the cave, into the darkness and shine the light of your awareness and shine the light of your consciousness on it and allow it to be what it is and be able to sit with it as it is and surrender to it, surrendering to what is. Being able to fully accept yourself exactly where you are, your life circumstance, your situation, However it's unfolding for you, can you accept yourself exactly as you are? And simply allow whatever arises to be there and be present with it. If you would like support on your journey and you're ready to fully claim your divine sovereignty as a divinely worthy woman, I invite you to check out Embody the Empress, which is my divine feminine monthly immersion. You can check out all the details in the caption below this video. And until next time, I hope this finds you well. Namaste.